Hello guys, my name is Wale Faro. I'm a tech entrepreneur and you are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On today's episode, we'll conclude our FinTech Roundtable series, this time with a discussion on FinTech-related investments. The Nigerian tech space in general has seen major validation from global investors over the past few years. And reports show uh, that over $400 million went into FinTech-related startups in 2019. And amid this pandemic, Nigeria-based FinTechs have already announced new rounds of investment this year. But will this trend continue? That's the question. To help us unpack this, this panel discussion was led, led by Deji, who is the director of platforms at EcoVC and a returning guest on the show. We covered several topics but focused on what investors might be doing differently going forward and how investments in fintech ideas and businesses across Africa might be impacted going forward. If you are an entrepreneur or you know someone who is a tech founder, you should send them this episode. I hope you find it interesting. An independent study that I did showed that there might be as close to $400 million in investment that came into the tech space generally last year. That's, that's a significant sum uh, to a market where there was nothing of that nature uh, some 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, a, from an investor's perspective, what is driving this? What's giving these guys the confidence that they can put a lot of money in technology companies driven by local entrepreneurs, focusing almost exclusively at times on the Nigerian market? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're very right. Um, well, it, it's, it's in, in fact, I think it was it's, uh, well, last year, it was about 650 million into uh, Nigerian uh, tech sector. Um, with over a billion into the continent, and and if you look at that upward fundraising trend um, in the continent, over 90 African companies um, raise over a million dollars, um, and and beyond that as well, uh, which was actually quite significant, is that you also have market entry by um, more traditional players, you know, big banks, um, corporate VCs, sovereign wealth funds, and the like. Um, if you drill down, actually, which is quite interesting, into those deals, you find that um, a majority of those deals were targeted at um, companies that had a uh, pan-African uh, strategy to to their business, and that signals to me two things. It's it's one that, in actual fact, the the tech ecosystem is maturing um, on the continent. Um, primarily in this case, Nigeria. What is driving uh, perception that FinTech is an area of growth, especially for investors who are looking at the African space? You know, if we break it down, um, you know, into its most fundamental components, um, like financial services have, you know, three core functions. Um, transfer, store of value and space. So by that, I mean payments and banking, um, the transfer or storage of value and time. Um, this is financing, investments, and the like. And lastly, um, managing entropy. So, you know, entropy of value being things like insurance. And so when you look at the technological institutional changes um, that have been created, uh, the conditions for fundamental rethinking of how and where uh, the core functions and finance are delivered, um, you know, the whole notion of embedded finance, as it were. That's where I think there's been a fantastic opportunity um, for innovation on the continent and, in, and on a global level. Um, you see um, the likes of, I say, the super apps who are now being able to, you know, have that embedded finance feature within a majority of, of, the, of, of what it is they do. Um, as uh, Nandi mentioned, you know, the fact that Conga is an e-commerce platform um, but is able to then um, bring out Conga Pay, um, that in itself may not necessarily be, I don't think it was in the, in the early, early beginnings of, of how they may have thought how e-commerce would have operated. 
Um, but you know, along the lines, these are the sorts of innovations that have been able to capture, um, I guess, public sentiment. Um, by public sentiment, I mean investor sentiment, because uh, these are these are models that are able to drive significant revenue. Um, I was reading what yesterday Orange Mobile has just launched uh, mobile money in Morocco. This is now 18 countries in Africa that um, um, Orange Orange Mobile money is now operating in. And you already mentioned about GTB um, going after the fintech. So, in terms of it, financial services, I think that that is always going to be a, a significant driver to being able to um, promote the well-being of any individual and and that necessarily and, and i think that primarily is the reason why um, fintech is such a huge um, industry um, it's not to say that other industries aren't worth uh, and shouldn't be worth um, their own consideration but you can see how you know being able to you know find the basic necessities are required for life you know being able to get your food being able to get from a to b being able to Pay school fees, being able to, you know, get an insurance product for your workers, um, whether it be health, whether it be um, transport, all of these are very significant, and I think that's probably one of the main um, reasons behind um, the drive uh, towards uh, financial services. How, how do you see how do you see the investment space shaping up, shaping up uh, post COVID nineteen? Because I think that's something that we all really need to be thinking about, especially those that are thinking about fundraising at this time. Yeah, I think it's a good question, and, and um, thank you for bringing me back to it. It's you know, post COVID nineteen, we also you, we all have to also take into consideration that you know, in all likelihood, there's going to be a global economic uh, recession. So you know, that being said. I think there will be a lot of deals that will still occur because um, it's definitely going to move away from, I guess, founder friendly to, I guess, an investor, not not investor friendly, but let's say valuations may not be as uh, magnificent as they used to be, yeah. um, which which in itself is not a bad thing at all because I personally feel that you know higher valuations a lot of times set companies up in a bad way because it pushes you into. Um, you yeah. know, if you're no, nobody wants to raise, yeah. nobody wants to have a down round. Um, you know, internal. Even if you go through an internal round, nobody wants to do that. Um, investors are going to be looking really, really hard at um, companies' unit economics um, and the fundamentals. And the fundamentals being those sound economics, sound teams, killer teams, and the ability to scale. So. If you have that, uh, irrespective of what economy you're operating in, um, I, I believe that the savvy investor would certainly be looking out for deals of that type. And it doesn't really matter whether you're in an economic downturn or not. So in terms of the actual drivers, I think those won't, those won't change much. Sound unit economics, um, fantastic uh, founders, fantastic teams, and uh, the ability to scale and scale really well. Hopefully, uh, like you said, deals will still happen. Uh, maybe it's, it's an opportunity for founders to also reset and rethink valuation, and maybe that makes it work uh, for both uh, founders. Hope you enjoyed that panel discussion with DJ. We will round up our interview series with another guest next week. In the meantime, for other tech-related stories and articles, please make sure you check out techroundup.tv. Some of the headlines this week include Facebook new video chat features, the CBN postponement of changes to MFB regulation, and what tech companies can learn from Zoom's address of security concern of its products. As always, we love to hear your comments and feedback, so please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wally Farrell and subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so. Also, like us on Facebook and be part of our vibrant tech community. And lastly, Tech Roundup is back on radio. Catch us on 99.3 FM, Nigeria Info, every Wednesday from 11.30 a.m. Have a great weekend, guys. Stay safe and have a good weekend. Good night.